Welcome back to Pilot Playhouse here on the Sci-Fi Channel. I'm your host, Ron Perlman. Each of our pilot episodes has been a nostalgic trip back in time to the birth of our favorite TV series. Well, time travel lies at the core of our next pilot, Quantum Leap. Time travel has always been a popular theme in science fiction, but for the creator of Quantum Leap, time travel wasn't the point of the show. It was a means to a greater plan. We caught up with Don Belisario where he was scouting locations for a new series on the Hawaiian island of Maui. So I was trying to feel how to do an anthology and get them to buy it, and I thought of a time travel show because then I could have a lead, or as it turned out, two leads, who travel through time, and each week it would be a completely different story, complete new cast, but it had the continuity of a star in the show or stars in the show that the public would like and follow from week to week. In this two-hour pilot episode, Dr. Sam Beckett is about to succeed in leaping through time, landing in the year 1956. But when he gets there, he'll discover that his problems are just beginning in this very first episode of Quantum Leap. Welcome back to Pilot Playhouse on the Sci-Fi Channel. We're watching the first episode of Quantum Leap. I'm your host, Ron Perlman. Our time-traveling hero, Sam Beckett, is played by Scott Bakula, which rhymes with Dracula. A St. Louis native, Bakula made his early career on the New York stage. He won a Tony in 1988 for his role in Romance, Romance. He's an accomplished singer, pianist, and composer, and was recently among those honoring Stephen Sondheim at the Kennedy Center Awards. But that's not what got him the role of Sam Beckett. Producer Don Belisario told us about Scott's audition. The moment he read for me, he was the character. That is very, very rare. He asked me some very intelligent questions about the character. And, um, and uh, the minute he walked out the door, I said, get in now. Now, I didn't say that while he was in the room, because I didn't want him to know I was that enthused, <laughs> and we might have to pay him more money. Well, Belisario got him, and now you've got him, too as we continue the pilot episode of Quantum Leap here on the Sci-Fi Channel. Mother Hen heading 25060 I'm Ron Perlman welcoming you back to Pilot Playhouse and the first episode of Quantum Leap. Dean Stockwell plays Al in the series, a mildly lecherous holographic guide from the future, visible only to Sam. In the pilot, Al's last name is classified, but later episodes revealed him as Admiral Albert Calavici. In Italian, Calavici means screwdriver, which kind of fits the character. Originally, producer Don Belisario was surprised that Dean Stockwell was interested in the role. He just finished Married to the Mob, and he was very hot on a feature career, you know, which he's had through his whole life. And Dean wanted to do it. Dean came in, Dean read for the part, which surprised me. And he, too, nailed it and brought him together. Now, what happened was a little piece of magic. Dean and Scott really enjoyed each other and really liked each other. And they became a team, a wonderful team on the show. And that, that went on for almost five years. This professional and personal friendship are much in evidence as we return to the pilot episode of Quantum Leap here on the Sci-Fi Channel. Welcome back to Pilot Playhouse. While Quantum Leap was not heavy on sci-fi special effects, that doesn't mean it was inexpensive to produce. Every time Al went through an image chamber door, it cost $12,000 in sets and extras. Producer Don Belisario still wasn't satisfied. I'm sorry I ever showed some of the, some of the chambers uh, and some of the things that we showed at the Quantum Leap project because we never achieved what I had hoped to achieve in my imagination and that was purely budgetary. Speaking of budgets, the two-hour pilot episode was shot in 26 days. By the fifth season, Universal was pushing to reduce shooting time from eight to seven days for a one-hour episode. And each episode was a completely new story requiring sets and props to be built from scratch. Now back to the very first Quantum Leap here on the Sci-Fi Channel. All right. What? Welcome back to Pilot Playhouse. I'm your host, Ron Perlman. You're watching the pilot episode of Quantum Leap. 
If you're a fan of unintentional error in film and television, keep an eye out for that digital clock you saw earlier in the story. You'll see it once again. Too bad that sort of clock hadn't yet been invented in 1956. Now back to Quantum Leap, here on the Sci-Fi Channel. I'm Ron Perlman, welcoming you back to the Pilot Playhouse. In Quantum Leap, only Sam can see Al, his guide from the future. That's because Al is a hologram who appears through a subatomic agitation of carboquarks, attuned to Sam's brain. Well, quarks are real enough, theoretically, that is. Since 1974, they've been believed to be the particles that make up atoms. But carboquarks are a product of Don Belisario's imagination. And that imagination was never satisfied with that hologram effect. If we were doing it as a feature, which someday I hope we will do, then I would probably have Al floating all the time next to Sam, not walking around with him, just floating around with him, because that's what he'd really be doing if he's a hologram. Now prepare to leap back into the pilot episode of Quantum Leap here on the Sci-Fi Channel. <laughs> Welcome back to Pilot Playhouse. I'm Ron Perlman. We're watching the first ever episode of Quantum Leap here on the Sci-Fi Channel. What exactly determines where in time Sam Beckett will land each time he leaps? In this pilot, in the early episodes, his friend Al gives a lot of credit to God. Network executives feared the show might become too preachy, so in later episodes, the leaps were explained more in terms of science fiction. 